And you welcome back to our live coverage of the hashtag and bad governance. It's day four. And of course, uh, Sunday morning, 7 a.m., very early this morning, we had the presidency, and that's President Bola Tinubu address the nation. And he called for protesters, that's the end bad governance protesters across the nation uh, to, you know, put down their placards and go home. And he's ready for dialogue. He also, you know, spoke to Nigerians and also uh, reeled out some of the reforms and initiative that this current administration has embarked on um, to steer the arms of uh, the uh, economy to greatness. And also uh, he talked about the agricultural sector and also the economy. And so to that effect, we're having a second analyst join us today to talk about the economic part and the economic impact implications of his speech today and that is of course joining us live via video chat it is Ugo Obichuku is the founder CEO of Naira Metrics. Ugo a very good morning to you and thank you so much for coming on. Good morning Julie thanks for having me. Good morning Ugo how are you doing? Hey Mr. Mazino very fine how are thank you? you very much. I'm very fine thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, so let's we... get started shall we? Yes please. <laughs> And I would like to ask you about, you know, your first impressions of the speech very, very, very quickly. Uh, you listened to it uh, 7 a.m. this morning, a 15 minutes long uh, thereabout speech. What was your first impression while listening to the president this morning? Yeah, uh, thanks, Judith. I, I think I, um, I mean, I, I want to look at this from, from two sides, uh, positives and, and, of course, uh, maybe the downside. I think that it was a pretty much uh, empathetic speech. I, I think I saw personally a president who um, was, you know, a little bit, um, you know, empathetic with with uh, his constituents as Nigerians in general. Uh, he sounded like uh, he was, um, you know, doing enough or doing a lot uh, to try and change the economic trajectory of the country. Uh, he also, he also looked at his body language. Uh, he was standing. Uh, he, you know, gesticulated a few times with his hands, uh, trying to essentially, you know, connect with, uh, with with Nigerians who were watching him. And then even the tone of his voice was, uh, you know, was a bit assuring, uh, if I can use that word. Uh, so, you know, from that from that point of view, it all sounded quite good. Even the the content of his speech as well was uh, not not combative at all, not not at all, you know, critiquing. He was sounded uh, like he was trying to, you know, pass his own message, albeit perhaps we should have done that earlier. Uh, but basically saying, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. Uh, you know, this is what we're trying to achieve. We understand what the issues are. Uh, we're doing A, B, C, D, E. Uh, things are going to get better. So from the posture and all of that, you could see that, you know, he basically was trying to connect as much as he can as a Democrat. Now, but to the substance of the message, uh, well, probably did a very good job at, at reading out everything that, uh, you know, the policies that they've put forward. I, I think by our estimates uh, at Naira Metrics, I think there were probably about 29 or so of them uh, policies that he reeled out, uh, different sort of different kind of policies. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess for me, uh, it kind of stopped short of, of letting us know clearly uh, what the policy targets are. I mean, what are you trying to drive at? Uh, if you want to reduce, if you know that Nigerians are worried about inflation and, and you know, cost of uh, food, especially, what are your targets? Are you telling us that by the end of the year, inflation is going to drop by X number or you're going to reduce food by X number? Uh, what about, um, you know, fuel, fuel, fuel prices? Uh, do you see fuel prices coming down in future or do you think that it's going to keep, uh, you know, rising? Uh, are you telling us that, you know, refineries are going to be in operation by the end of the year? To help uh, reduce uh, some of you know some of the pain or the cost of high fuel price uh, fuel prices, or are we going to see you know or are the refineries going to eventually lead to the elimination of fuel queues that we see around the country? Uh, and then uh, what about um, you know domestic domestic uh, uh, you know uh, production as well within the country? So output essentially. So are we going to see our businesses going to keep operating at a very high interest rate environment or? Uh, do you expect to see maybe GDP start to grow uh, by X amount at certain point in time? So I, I kind of didn't see, you know, some specifics uh, that I thought that would probably have connected better, uh, you know, from a policy standpoint, because policies are not made in the thin air. You know, when you're making policies, you have to, you know, align those policies with clear targets. Uh, so if you're saying, look, we reduced um, 
we took away or we, you know, we basically introduced a managed float of the exchange rate so that we can achieve A, B, C, D, E. And then we're expecting to see X amount of FDIs or FPIs over the next one, two, three. I mean, I kind of think maybe that would resonate more with Nigerians because then you can now align a lot of the policy, uh, you know, pronouncements or the uh, initiatives that it put forward in line with targets and then, of course, timelines, because we all know that it takes time for policies to start to materialize. But where you don't have very clear targets or nobody's very clear where you're going to with all of this, and you don't have a very clear timeline, then it just makes the entire speech a little bit uh, subduing. Mr. Godre, um, apparently you have plenty of questions. And two hours or uh, two hours ago, just immediately after the president's speech, you actually made a submission on X, if I'm not mistaken, where you had more questions. You, you asked about the inflation target. You asked about FDI. You asked about unemployment rate. You asked about plan to cut fiscal deficits in GDP. You also now just spoke about the president's body language, which I think maybe we should reserve for a psychologist to come tell us exactly um, what it meant. However, you are a numbers guy. Even if the president ad addressed many things, he did that in plenty of governance jargon. You are a numbers person, and I'm hoping that we can break this down um, in terms of how people, the common man, can understand exactly what the demands from the protests are and exactly how the, the presidency could address it what he should have said without the jargon to the masses that would make them understand and how these policies are going to go into execution and a timeline. What would you have heard, taking all of what I just said into account? What would you have rather heard from the I president? Mean, I, think, uh, I, I think I kind of uh, mentioned that already, but maybe, maybe just to, to go before. In layman's terms, so, in layman's uh, terms, please. Exactly. In layman's term, uh, even though, to be to be honest, uh, you know, Mazino, I really don't know what you know layman terms is uh, per se. Uh, <laughs> you know, from this perspective, but but here's what's key, right? Uh, people want to be able to afford uh, a three square meal. Okay, basically, you want to be able to buy food and feed your family. Uh, you want to be able to pay affordable transportation cost. Uh, you also want you know, security. You also want to be sure that you want to ensure that your business is at least is thriving, right? I mean, these are just basic things that people want. And so from that perspective, what I was hoping to hear was, look, guys, I know that, you know, it costs X amount of money uh, or the cost of inflation. Inflation at the moment is 30, 30 something percent. Uh, part of what I'm trying to do is to drive inflation down to X number. And for that reason, I think that all with our plan is that by the end of the year, Nigerians should be able to afford three square meals. I should be able to bring food prices down by X amount of, you know, or by X percentage. I think people want to hear that. People want to be sure that they can eat. Oh, oh this policy that we're doing, oh, a lot of all these things that we're putting in place, I'm pretty sure that by the end of the year or by early next year or by next month or next week, you will start to see food on the table. You're going to see a lot of food in our market. You're going to see... Uh, you know, farmers flood our market with harvest and, and just clear things because at the end of the day, that's what people want. And then if you now come to fuel prices, which we know is one of the major triggers of inflation in Nigeria, you're trying to say, look, you're, you want you have to tell people that, look, refineries are going to come on stream X number of months. And if they don't come on stream, heads are going to roll because they told us last year that some of our local refineries are going to be ready by December. But this is August. They're still not ready and nothing has happened. So Nigerians don't know why. So if we're, if refineries are on stream, then you're telling us that you're pretty sure that fuel prices will stabilize or fuel prices would even start to go down, which will make things better for Nigerians. So that will connect better to Nigeria because these are things that people pay for, spend money for every, every day. And then of course, you now go to the exchange rate, which we all know is one of the major inputs uh, importation cost, and which also drives up uh, inflation rate as well. So you've seen the exchange rate go from about from you know seven seven fifty a year ago to one six or one five now. What are you? What are we? What, what is your clear message? Are you saying that look, you know the drivers' inflation rate? Drivers' inflation rate is because we haven't been seeing enough foreign portfolio investment in the country. You've seen about three point nine billion dollars coming in the first quarter, first quarter of this year. We're targeting another X billion dollars between now and the end of the year, and we're doing A, B, C, D, E. And by the time this happens, we will see we will see a semblance of a stable exchange rate, and then we could even see a strengthening of the exchange. Rate. I kind of think these are some of the things that 
I would have expected him to say. And I think everyone understands these things, even the regular person on the street. They understand that for prices, exchange rate, and yeah. food costs. So when you put it that way, when you put it that way, you've just succeeded in explaining to the layman out there. So he, you, you understand what I said from before. However, in your submission, what you've just given is an explanation to the policies that are already on ground. So you're saying that the president should have explained better to the people what these policies are, when they're going to take execution, and when they're going to come to fruition. That's what I gather from what you said. Um, and All right. uh, am I correct? Yes, you are very, very correct. You're very correct. That was what I expected him to connect, because that's the missing link here. Exactly. Right? Now there's more. Now regarding, you, you spoke about foreign interests in Nigeria. Regarding that, we saw plenty of, you know, uh, action when he was coming into uh, the administration, his foreign visits and promises that we would have a very uh, uh, attractive economy. With the protests now, how attractive is Nigeria to any foreign investor, especially when you now impute the debacle that we've had with our very own indigenous um, Dangote company trying to uh, do business here in Nigeria? Let's put all of that into your uh, next submission, please. Uh, yes, Mazino. You know, I, I mean, I think that was a bit of that, that was some cloud over uh, the head of a lot of the policies that they've been trying to uh, put forward, or especially when it comes to wooing foreign investors. Uh, the Central Bank Governor did tell us that uh, our external reserve is now around $37 billion uh, and growing, uh, suggesting that they are seeing tractions from foreign portfolio investors. However, uh, it is still hot money. A lot of this money is because of the high interest rates. Uh, that we're currently offering. And so foreign investors love high interest rates. And so that's why they're bringing in money. And in terms of foreign direct investment, the president himself also mentioned we've only seen just, just seen half a billion dollars. And that doesn't go in any way uh, when you also compare that to the amount of FDIs that has actually left uh, the country. And so for me, uh, yes, we've seen a lot of the, we've seen the protest uh, take on. I don't necessarily think that will have any negative effect uh, on you know foreign investors' perception of the country, I think that foreign investors understand that uh, reforms can be a very bitter pill to chew, and so when reforms are very hard, people tend to push back. Nigeria is not the only country where you're seeing protests happen. You've seen protests happen in several countries as well, even countries that are in a much better position than we are as a country. So I don't think that is going to dissuade uh, you know, foreign investors. What typically fear foreign investors is when there's instability in government and we're nowhere close to that. So what you're seeing is just regular protests that everyone expects to happen uh, when you're going through you know, the sort of economic trans transformation that we're seeing. So I I'm not in any way uh, worried about it. What I'm, however, worried about is the sort of signals that you're giving foreign investors uh, in your country, and uh, which is where you know, the Dangote issue comes in. So you're saying, look, from a policy standpoint, yes, you can be there and clean out all the policies, but how is you know, the people in government actually implementing those policies, the guys that matter, the guys at the ministries, the guys at the state level, the subnationals, how are they also encouraging implement, implementation of these policies and how are they also supporting businesses? You've seen uh, a lot of issues regarding ease of doing business, despite all the hard work that we've done over the years, ease of doing business is still a major concern for a lot of investors. And these are the things that investors look at. Investors are not going to, not going to necessarily look at you know, protests as one of those issues. They would look at the government themselves and what they are doing. They have their own clear KPIs. And if you don't meet the KPIs that foreign investors want, uh, then they're not going to bring their money in. Money, All like right. I always say, okay. knows no emotions. Money Mr. Ugo right. Dre. Uh, Ugo, I have to ask, because we're pressed for time, it's about, you know, the re reported progress with Nigeria's economy, specifically with our debt, you know, servicing. He said that, uh, the presidency said that, you know, the, the, de uh, the, 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 the debt servicing has reduced drastically uh, from 97, uh, 97% to 68%. And that's very intriguing, given that the exchange rate has changed within the last one year. So if we were doing that 97%, from last administration to this administration that ni the Naira to dollar is over a thousand Naira at uh, 68%. It begs to ask the question, how did that figure reduce to 68%, you know? Um, and I, I would like for you to answer that, but I know this is going to take a very extensive answer from you. Uh, uh, and if there's any way that you can answer this in a very short period of time, because we're going in for a break. 
All right, so just quickly, I, I, not, not, I don't think it's that complicated. Um, what he was speaking to was debt service to revenue ratio. And, and if you all recall, during the Buhari administration, we had debt service to revenue ratios of over 90%. And so essentially, the amount of debt that we're servicing, not the total debt, the amount of debt that is due to be repaid are uh, divided by the total right. revenue of the government. I think it's pretty clear that revenue of the government has increased over the last one year mostly because of the savings from fraud subsidy removal. And so when you account for that, I think that is why you've seen debt service to revenue, revenue ratio improve over the period. But All right. nevertheless, it's higher at over 60%. Well, uh, Ugo, I want to say thank you, Ugo, Ubu, uh, Ugo Obichuku. He is the founder, CEO of Naira Metrics, and he joined us today to look at the economical implications of the presidency's speech regarding the economy and uh, our recovering economy. Again, Ugo, many thanks for doing this with us. We appreciate you for coming on.